In this video, I'll be covering Chapter 2 of the Barron's AP Economics book. I'll be outlining the important stuff you need to know in this chapter for the AP exam, both micro and macro, and explaining each concept in depth. So, I'll first talk about what economics is and how it is split up into two branches, micro and macro. The next topic is about resources, and I'll explain what resources are and how it relates to econ. I will then explain opportunity costs and how it and the law of increasing costs relates to a production possibilities frontier. Finally, I will go over comparative advantage and absolute advantage. So what is economics? Economics is the study of resources and how they are used. However, economics is a very broad field, but everything in economics comes down to the application and the distribution of resources. You can also think of economics as a field that is concerned with the production, consumption, and transfer of wealth, whether it's about corporations or governments, or even an average person. It's about the same idea of using resources efficiently. Resources are stuff where you can produce something using it. They are split into three main types, land, labor, and capital. Lands aren't just spots of the earth. It also includes all types of natural resources, such as oil, minerals, lumber, etc. Labor is pretty self-explanatory, basically includes any human hired for work. And capital includes any sort of machinery or equipment use, such as computers, robots, machines, etc. The next topic is opportunity costs. Opportunity costs are what you give up to gain something. For example, if I watch two hours of TV, I lose out on two hours of study. Therefore, the opportunity cost of watching two hours of TV is two hours of study. It can also be trickier than that. If I go to a four-year college, my opportunity cost is not only the tuition I spend, but also the money I lose out on if I choose to spend those four years working instead. In economics, opportunity cost is mostly measured in this example. If good A is produced, how much of good B is sacrificed? This is an important conceptual idea to remember. In this chart, we can easily look at the opportunity costs of producing computers and cars. In this model, initially we can choose to produce 60 computers and zero cars. If we choose to produce one more car, the opportunity cost is 10 computers. However, at the next point, we can only produce one car and 50 computers. In this model, the opportunity cost is constant. Every time we produce one car, we give up 10 computers. However, note that opportunity costs are rarely constant. A production possibilities frontier can also be used to model per opportunity costs. In this graph, the line represents all the data we had in the previous chart, with various points marking the possible produ production points we can have. However, note that the, there are two dish additional points on this graph that are not included in the chart. The gray point is below the line. This represents inefficient production. Right now, that point is at two cars and 20 computers. But we can easily produce 20 additional computers or two additional cars without sacrificing anything. This is important to note for the AP test. This, inf this inf inefficient production is usually the result of unemployment, under allocated resources, or just inefficient production methods. The orange point above the line represents impossible production. It's just impossible to produce 40 computers and 40 cars. There is no point on the chart that, can, that shows that. This point represents future production. If the technology or productivity of production improves, then it can be possible to produce at the point because the whole production possibilities frontier will shift. Now, the law of increasing costs states that the opportunity costs of a good are always increasing. This is because some resources in the economy are better suited for the production of one good versus another. Think about it this way. Imagine if every single farmer and every single engineer in the whole world was employed to produce corn. We would have a whole lot of corn, but we would have no computers. This is because everyone's producing corn. However, think about it this way. Engineers are not very good at farming, but they're very good at producing computers. So if we choose to produce some computers and lose a little corn, we would gain a lot of computers, but we would lose only a little bit of corn because those engineers would move from producing corn to producing computers. The opportunity cost at this point is small because we're not giving up very much corn. However, if we produce a little too many computers, some will move some farmers from, from producing corn to producing computers, and which isn't very efficient, and the opportunity cost at this point is very high. 
So now the most efficient point on a curve, on a production possibilities curve, is towards the middle because we can maximize the production of both goods. I said it earlier that opportunity costs are rarely constant. A constant opportunity graph turns into a linear graph for the production possibilities frontier because it's constant every time you only give up a certain amount. A real life PPF would be more curved. The next chart shows what a real life PPF might look like. Initially, we might produce zero cards and 45 computers. The opportunity cost of producing one card at this point is only three computers because we go from 45 to 42. But producing a second car has an opportunity cost of 6 because we go from 42 to 36 and the next one is 9 and each time it's increasing. So th this turns the graph into sort of a curve where initially your opportunity cost is very small and it becomes kind of linear and it keeps increasing until and then just eventually you'll see that it just becomes a curve. Now the next topic relates to opportunity cost as well. The law of comparative advantages states that specialization will allow for increased output. However, it can be tricky to know who should produce what, and this is where opportunity costs come in. This chart shows the amount of labor hours required to produce TVs and phones for China and the U.S. Notice that the U.S. requires less hours to produce both goods. This gives the U.S. an absolute advantage in both, because the U.S. requires less resources to produce one unit of each. An absolute advantage is defined as whichever country or group requires less resources to produce one good or produces more goods from one unit of resource. It's possible to have an absolute advantage in more than one good, just one good, or in zero goods. However, it may be difficult to understand that both countries will benefit if they trade with each other. If they both specialize, they can produce more of each good than if they try to produce both themselves. Comparative advantage refers to whichever nation can produce a good with a lower opportunity cost. This doesn't mean that it's the most efficient, but rather it sacrifices the least when it produces it. So China has the comparative advantage for producing TVs. Even though it requires more hours to produce that TV, the opportunity cost of producing a TV for China is only one and a half phones, but the US sacrifices two phones for every TV they produce. The US on the other hand has a comparative advantage in producing phones. They only sacrifice half a TV for every phone they produce, but China sacrifices two thirds of a TV. So if China produces TVs and the U.S. produces phones, they'll combine to produce more than if they try to produce both themselves. Let's say each country has 120 labor hours to spend to make TVs and phones. The U.S. will only produce two TVs and eight phones, and China will produce two TVs and three phones. So they will combine to produce four TVs and 11 phones. If they specialize, however, and the U.S. produces phones and China produces TVs, the U.S. produces 12 phones and China will produce 4 TVs for a total of 4 TVs and 12 phones. This means to combine, they'll have an extra phone than if they didn't specialize. So this is why, in a comparative advantage, that's just why you should the, com the country with the comparative advantage should always produce that good. And that's it for this chapter. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video.